Hello Exile, as you know, there's a new league coming soon, or maybe a returning one, or an event. In short, it's version 3.25, part 2. Everyone has their own approach to this, but I want to once again create the strongest build I've ever played. Of course, I'm talking about the energy shield stack trickster that I tried out in this league. I stopped playing quickly last time because I was disappointed by the removal of magic find, but this time, I plan to create a truly powerful build. Last time, I used the splitting steel skill, which has strong damage for both bosses and map clearing. This time, I want to try lightning strike and maybe compare it with splitting steel. These two skills, along with molten strike of zenith, are among the best options. However, with a few adjustments, you can use almost any attack skill you like, even flicker strike. There are several versions of this build, from the more familiar one using evasion to a block-focused version with Aegis Aurora. Key passive skills like Wicked Ward or Ghost Reaver can be used, and all these options offer high damage and excellent survivability. Since this build is the most popular in the current league, it will most likely be nerfed in the next one, so this may be the last chance to enjoy it. Since the start of this event will be almost identical to the start of 3.25, Except for a small bonus of positive mods from the Necropolis League, I've created a simple action plan to get started. Along with a baseline setup that makes it comfortable for me to begin playing this build. Of course, we'll first need to complete the axe and farm some initial currency. To avoid creating an extra character later, the best choice would be to start with a Locust Mine Power Siphon build, for which you can find a guide by Yumron. Although I don't really like this build's mechanics, it deals excellent damage and has good clearing ability even with starter items. This should be enough for us to farm 10 to 20 divine orbs for the respect. I'll also show you how to acquire starting equipment, such as the ephemeral edge, and maybe even earn some currency by crafting items. Now, let's move on to the build itself. Naturally, the key item for us will be ephemeral edge. It usually costs around 40 chaos orbs, but there's an alternative way to obtain it. For this, we'll need several ancient orbs and a unique sword that also occupies 6 inventory slots, with an item level between 32 and 46. Using a higher level item isn't advisable, as it would require too many ancient orbs, making it unprofitable. However, keep in mind that if you plan to corrupt the sword later to get resolute technique, the item level must be at least 40. This approach could allow you to obtain the sword a bit more cheaply, especially if not many players are using this method. This sword grants 20% of the player's maximum energy shield as lightning damage. Even with a mid-tier setup, we'll have over 15,000 energy shield, resulting in a huge amount of flat damage. For the basic rare items like the helmet, body armor, gloves, and boots, We'll focus on maximizing the energy shield value and stacking intelligence, which further boosts our energy shield. For body armor, suppress on a suffix is a strong choice, while attack speed is useful on gloves. Movement speed on boots can be sacrificed in favor of a higher energy shield, since we'll primarily be moving with skills like whirling blades, leap slam, or shield charge, whichever you prefer. How do you get items with high energy shield? The quickest option, of course, is to buy them through trade, but I prefer to craft everything myself. The best methods for this are using a recombinator or fossil crafting. With recombining, it's fairly easy to get items with 3 T1 modifiers without spending too much currency. However, if you're aiming for 4 or 5 modifiers, be prepared to invest a significant amount. For the second option, we'll need dense fossils, which we'll use until we get suitable values. This method is preferable in the early stages, as it usually requires less currency and has a chance to yield good mods with additional useful suffixes. Of course, don't forget to select the best item bases. In our case, these are the Lich's Circlet, Warlock Gloves, Warlock Boots, Titanium Spirit Shield, and Necrotic Armor, which interacts well with our Ascendancy. If possible, aim for a high base percentile as well. Also, remember to update your item filter to display the bases you'll need for future crafting. For the rings and amulet, we're also focused on maximizing energy shield. 
Crusader influence can give us a percentage boost to energy shield. Additionally, we'll want any evasion rating on the rings to unlock the mastery on the skill tree. 20% increased maximum energy shield if both equipped rings have evasion modifiers, the situation is similar with the belt, but here we also want at least one strong mod related to flasks. Why is this important? Let me explain. Since we have limited sources for gaining resistances, you might be wondering, what about our resists? To address this, we'll use a brutal restraint with Balbala to acquire the key passive skill, the Traitor. Our flasks will gain charges for each empty flask slot, so we need to leave at least one slot empty. Of course, you can start with just three flasks and not worry about their modifiers or the suffix on the belt. However, using a prismatic tincture in the fourth slot will provide a significant damage boost, which will greatly simplify our gameplay, especially in the early stages. We will definitely use the ruby, sapphire, and topaz flasks with the enchantment, recharges at the end of this flask effect. Additionally, choose one of the following prefixes, increased duration, reduced charges per use, or increased charge recovery. You can select any suffixes based on your preferences, but I believe the best options are additional elemental resistances, increased evasion rating, and movement speed. This way, we'll only need to use our flasks once at the start of the map, and they will remain effective until the end. For the prismatic tincture, we're interested in the increased effect, as well as options for attack speed or penetrating elemental resistances. Let's take a moment to discuss the skills. The early choices will definitely be splitting steel or lightning strike. I'll start with the LS, but if I experience eye strain, I'll switch to the former. The skill setups should look like this, don't forget to include returning projectiles, which can significantly boost our damage, up to 200%, a benefit not shown in the path of building. We'll use Sniper's Mark as a curse, along with Mark on hit, so we don't have to apply it manually. Also, make sure you have enough mana to cast it. You can add Inspiration support to help reduce the mana cost. Next, we have our Auras, Haste, Discipline, and Grace. We have enough mana to use them even without Enlighten, but it's more comfortable to play with it. You can choose to forego Enlighten for now if needed. As a movement ability, I prefer Whirling Blades, but you can choose any one you like. I also recommend adding Culling Strike, which can be helpful in boss encounters. Next, we need a Guard skill. Since we don't have armor, the best options are Immortal Call or Steel Skin. Choose whichever you prefer and link it to cast when damage taken. If you have free sockets, you can also add increased duration. We'll also use Smite, which increases our damage for a short time when it hits an enemy. You can opt for Vigilant Strike to gain Fortify if you don't mind pressing an extra button. Additionally, don't forget about Precision, we may face some accuracy issues early on until we obtain Resolute Technique for our weapons. At the early stage, the tree looks like this, you can check it out using the POB link in the description. Don't hesitate to make changes as you see fit, Remember that all builds are flexible and allow you to add or remove whatever you like. If you'd prefer to start with a different class, the best choices would be Lightning Strike Slayer, Ice Nova Frostbolt Hierophant, Hexblast Occultist, or Bleed Gladiator. You should have no trouble finding a guide for any of these builds. Don't forget to like, and share in the comments which build you're planning to play and how you feel about the League Restart. See you in a couple of days, good luck, exile.